filmmaker, my job is to tell a story, and then uh, after that, you need to tell it as effective as possible, for one of a better word. Okay? Now, a theatrical film, obviously, you, you, there is a, a certain restriction, could be of sensor, could be of the kind of audience will come in, all kinds of people will come in, it's because uh, it's an audience of uh, in hundreds when they sit in a group. And uh, so you obviously have to have certain restrictions, both legal and commercial and uh, various other considerations. But when on the web you are telling a story, you are actually telling it one person at a time and he's only coming there if he's interested in subject matter and he also is aware of what he's going to see. So I think nothing will be lost in translation in terms of how effectively I can tell. So I know so much about the underworld. And, uh, if you, even if you look at the language or certain imagery, which is like a part and, uh, and uh, thing, like uh, when you see a foreign film or something, you don't feel it as long as it is coming in a context. But trying to hide it or trying to water it down, I think it is doing injustice to the aspect of uh, what it, uh, it is supposed to be. But see, for example, first time one uh, saw an imagery was in Bandit Queen, right. when Shekhar Kapoor made some 25 years back. But you know it is coming in a context is not meant for a certain reason. Our first time you heard expletives in Satya, which came in 99 or 98. Even there, the effect is in context. So I think if, if you've seen it, you know that not a single shot is being did for effect. And you know that they're all a part of a certain world. And uh, the language and images, I think, are an interesting part of the world. That is what my whole uh, point is. So but talking about imaging, I think this is the first time perhaps you have pushed the envelope as far as that series goes. Female nudity is not something yeah. that we often see in, even in Indian web series. So, how did you tackle that subject and uh, uh, how, how much of a preparation did it take from the actress' side? I mean, I would say that you know, when I met, uh, I mean, actors or actresses, the kind of certain things which are required, when I told them my intention and I told them what exactly it means and world over, you see, first of all, web series is a digital world. It is, it is not bound by uh, areas. It is not like, uh, it is being seen only by people in this region. The digital world is a separate world, it's an alternative world. You know, we, we, I mean, I can watch in Narcos, which is being made in Colombia, and a subtitle version, people in South Indian villages are watching Narcos. So I think when you come to digital web series, you should not think in terms of cinema, or a certain group, or a certain region, or a certain kind of people watching. I mean, you might have, Five people watch, uh, 500 people watch it in Colombia, you might only have 10 people watch in uh, in Bangalore, for example, I'm saying. That, that happens all the time in the digital world. That's a filmmaker, yeah. So when I, I explain this, even the actors and whoever were involved, they were convinced with my sincerity and uh, my logic and they trusted me with uh, how I will uh, do that. Yeah. As a filmmaker, like the 90s, uh, this uh, underworld was rampant in the industry, film industry. So what was your experience like? Uh, and and you, many of your films are also on Underworld. Yeah. And, uh, See, there are two points. One is, I don't know if Underworld is relevant today as much as in the, uh, I mean, I think it pretty much uh, lost its uh, high mm -hmm. in 2005, I would think, around, around that. Maybe this, uh, that's around 10 years back, 10, 12 years back. But the point is, when you're telling a story, I don't think it's about whether it is happening now or it happened like in the 1920s is when uh, the mafia started in uh, in, uh, in America just after the prohibition time. And pretty much by 1950s it got over. And Godfather was made in early 70s, 1973. So I think any time you see a story, it is, a, it is eventually the characters and the situation. When it's a genre, mafia is a crime drama. We all understand, uh, where the, like even Satya, when people said, how does Ramu know so much? Uh, he really knows them, he portrayed them realistically. But who, who did ever, ever I mean, anyone meet a gangster? How do they know it is real? They're connecting to the emotions which seem real, which is the reason it looks real. The pretty much same thing stands for it. Like in the voiceover it explains, uh, why was there escalated uh, criminal activity happened between 95 and 2005? Because after the breakup of the D company, a lot of other gangs were trying to fight. You can understand that. It's like a company breaks up, all the competitors will try to uh, corner the market. It's exactly the same thing which, uh, which will happen even in the underworld. So that will create situations, that will create characters, that will create interrelationships which you normally never see otherwise uh, all the time.
Yeah. So is the nexus between I mean, the way we see between Bollywood and underworld today is still as strong as it was perhaps a decade ago? Oh, not so, not necessarily. So I see to to start with. First of all, I think it's a misconception. People think that uh, there's a nexus between the underworld and Bollywood. See, there are two reasons. Underworld never put money, which is a misconception. The underworld also has to put money. Why is it underworld? I mean, it defeats the purpose. You know, most of the time, they either they use it for publicity, you know, because and they used to get a high to scare. Uh, who we think are stars and big filmmakers, you know. And the third thing is they used to help friends by making a phone call, things like that. But pretty much the underworld at that time was in a mood of uh, a big being in the news. They were just very publicity crazy at that time, you know, apart from other reasons what I mentioned. But when the CIU was created, the Encounter Corps uh, in 98 to 99, Pretty much by 2004, they killed most of the gangsters. You know? So that created a huge, uh, I mean, they also lost a lot in terms of their power and everything. So that pretty much signaled, like I said, the end of it. And disbanding of the Encounter Squad in 2005, more or less is a signal that the underworld as a force has been uh, completely reduced. So yeah. will we get to see the series on YouTube? Yeah, of course. But, uh, I mean, see, right? The point is, um, see, whether it's on YouTube or Vimeo, it is eventually made for the digital market. No, correct. Mm -hmm. The reason why I'm asking that is because YouTube has a no nudity clause. See, course, then it will come. It might come in age restriction, depending upon uh, how. So you even in age restriction, yeah. it is allowed only if it is that's for educational true. or scientific. That's, that's purposes, not true. That's not true. Okay. Uh, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. No, okay. hmm. What's it? Because you've majorly made crime dramas and yeah. gangster uh, stories, so have you ever been at the receiving end because the subject matter that you're dealing with involves a lot of risk? So has that ever happened? Where is he, buddy? If I'm still alive, then I was not on the receiving end. <laughs> no, but in a way, perhaps that you were ever threatened by any of the because the subject is. I mean, to be serious, I see, to start with, first of all, why would the underworld have any problem with anyone making? Underworld is a kind of an illegal business organization for the want of a better word. And they are not concerned about, they are not like terrorists who are selling an ideology. They are not uh, uh, trying to sell a certain thought and the way they think a filmmaker is trying to counter them. You know? So pretty much I think they would either ignore or they would be uh, thinking that I'm, they might have been something wrongly or uh, too uh, uh, wrongly portrayed. But otherwise, technically speaking, there is no reason to be it's very much like if I if I make a film on uh, businessmen, businessmen won't be upset with me, no? <laughs> you know? Sir, uh, why yeah. have you chosen to cast new actors, relatively new actors? In See, I would, I think, I wanted to have a very heightened sense of reality in the thing where I, my hope, my always I believe that if known actors are there, okay. it will look like uh, you are seeing an, a person perform because you know the person, you have seen that person in other, other films or wherever. But if it's an unknown actor, I think you take him like a character, which is what worked in Satya also. Imagine if I have very known faces in Satya, I don't think it would have looked the same. Whose voice was that? The lady who was the old? That is uh, Rohini Hathangdi's. Sir, you always have a tweet with the rest of the people. In the case of Abhijit, you have been banned from Twitter. What do you think of this? Sir, can you please only talk about guns and thighs? If you don't like both guns and thighs, then we'll meet separately. I think there... So, no, but as someone who gives opinions so freely and so openly, do you think in today's time, it has become very difficult for one, especially a celebrity of someone of your stature or others, to express their thoughts openly without being trolled? Without being, without being trolled to, to such an extent that they are bulldozed to get off the social media. See, I think social media is just noise. I really don't think it should be. First of all, to take it seriously, I think is wrong. Because eventually it is a democracy and everyone has a right to speak by the constitution. And social media just allows you to shout. But whether someone wants to take the shout seriously or they have the choice to block it, they have the choice not to I mean, follow. So I think to take the social media seriously, I think is a mistake. I think it's like graffiti, it's on walls. Yeah. So why, so why do we have uh, this overbearing element of uh, you know, the underworld and sex always present, mostly present in many of 
see, I would say, see, if you look at it, the power and sex are the two most primarily motivating factors by nature. I'm talking about by even if you without the social advancement on the way a religion or a morality or a social standards before all this come in, which make a society, the primary motivating factors for anything are power and sex. So the moment there are people in powerful positions, powerful positions by definition, they want to go against the establishment of a certain uh, restricted mode. So they will indulge in something which they tell the normal people not to, most of the time, which is the reason uh, wars happen for women, you know. Yeah, and our uh, companies, uh, you know, so many things, too many times it's women and the power which actually roll the entire thing. So I, I called it guns and thighs as a synonym for the effect of power and sex on uh, politics of any kind of an organization. So do you think sex still has a shock value for Indian audience as compared to people abroad? I think anyone with a normal body will have sex as a shock value, I think. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that was meant to be. I mean, see, the point. The point is, if a gunshot is happening at a certain place, a kid happened to be there. So many times you hear criminal acts, the terrorist acts. You no, know? I don't think when an act happens, the guy who's going to shoot a gun is going to look at a kiska moka for the like. Obviously, he can't do that. You know. So I think the fact that it can happen mm. in places where even children and normal people are there, that the, I wanted to assert that point there. But is it allowed to show your kids with that? Is it allowed by whom? I, mean, I don't know. I, have I mean, yeah, see, see, first of all, on a digital space, eventually you're talking about a legal or a moral or whatever. So that what we put on the kid is actually sweet water mixed with color. Mm. And the boy, I mean, obviously, but when you're seeing it in the context, it looks like actual blood has been thrown on his face, which obviously that that is not how films are done. Yeah. Mr. Varma, there are a few other filmmakers who are going to web series, like we just met Rekta Kapoor. And she clearly said, the first thing she told me was, I'm doing it because I can't show this on TV and movies, so I can show this, so yeah. show this freely. So I'm seeing it from CDFC guidelines that they have. So you also have that in mind? Or? I, you see, that's, that's what I'm saying. I, I don't think but that is the only point. That is one point. Yeah, I also would tell the story in an extended period of time to give it the justification, you know. And uh, like each meet, like also you are, you are, anybody who comes to watch something called Guns and Thighs, the title itself is indicative of what it is. Then you are telling it's about underworld. It's about uh, what, whatever the graphic language and all that. After that, you are making a choice as an yeah. individual. Freedom is about you being able to make the choice. So you can't stop everyone else, whoever wants to see it, to stop here because they both all are in the theater. So I understand a censorship regulation for a theater because it has number of sensibilities. Yeah. So where do you draw the line between not glorifying people, uh, especially people belonging to underworld and not make them seem heroic on screen? Because See, I think this is like a very age-old thing uh, people keep talking about, cinema glorifies, you know, which I, which I think is uh, absolutely incorrect because for the simple reason, let, let me put it this way, the most successful film of all time in the history is Shole, let's say, in Hindi cinema. And Gabbar Singh is the most loved character, but I don't know if a single person who got inspired to become a decoid in the Chambal Valley after seeing Shole. Neither did I ever hear of two families who were, who were uh, fighting with each other, became a joint family after watching Hama <laughs> you know? So I think it's a completely exaggerated thing of that. And eventually cinema is about heightening emotions. It's about showing imaginary conflicts and to create some kind of a resolution by the time you reach the end. And to make it effective, you have to take the conflict high. Now if you look at even a movie like Satya, for example, everybody dies by the time they, they take the gun. It's not like, I mean, and you, you see those numerous examples of that. The man who leaves by the gun dies by the gun, things like that. So I think, yes, but you, will, you might create, like, you know, you see a Mad Max, you want to go fast in a bike, you know? But that, that uh, speed of the bike will only be from your compound till you come to the road. Once you're in the traffic jam, you will, <laughs> it will be level. The water will reach its own level. 
मिस्टर वर्मा अगर आप फिल्म मेकर नहीं होते तो और क्या होते हैं अगर फिल्म मेकर नहीं होते तो गैंग सब तो नहीं होता हूँ मैं आई थिंक इफ आई वॉज नॉट ए फिल्म मेकर आई वुड है नो आई जस्ट नॉट नैदर डू आई नो नॉट आई एम इंटरेस्टेड इन एनी थिंग एक्सेप्ट फिल्म So then, yeah. how do you? I mean, with with film after film, whenever you come out, there are people waiting to write you down and pull mm-hmm. you up. That okay, maybe Ram Gopal Verma isn't the same as he was before. Yeah, because you've been there wasting the time writing. I'm making the film. <laughs> it yeah. never bothers you that way. Yeah. But since I'm not, I'm not bothering him doing this. No? Yeah. So there was a line. Uh, I mean, I think the the trailer that you saw it ends with a quote from Rahul Ibrahim. Mm-hmm. Where did he give that quote? I think. See, obviously he didn't write the book, but I know a lot of people who interacted with him. Yeah, he always used to say this line: "If you keep on if all the time want to die, you know, always try and scared to die. What's the point of living?" No? So would you like and if you, huh? would you like to tell us the person who probably told you about? No. Yeah, I mean, who said that he was interviewed? Yeah. I think probably spoken. Anyway, it's not about the interview. I also know people who interacted with him at some time. You are talking about some some thirty year career. Has he ever contacted right? you? No. The moment he does, I will tell you. You know, I mean, you are the kind of outspoken person. Sir, are you happy with the the response that you received from Sarkar Tri? How would you put it? I want to just stick to Guns and Thais for the moment. Yeah. So who, have, uh, who, which actor did you show that way? Uh, the uh, speeches. Which actress? Actors, yeah. actors like which actors? Did you show it to Amitabh or maybe anybody? No. Well, no, I didn't show it to. I mean, till the time I released it, now I haven't shown it to anyone. So Are you planning to show? Are you planning to meet someone that you maybe show your friend? I mean, but this is now it's on YouTube. Anyone who wants to see it will see it. What's the point of me showing it anymore? Anywhere, anywhere. Uh, so how do you feel the captain put the catch lab on uh, cinema twenty eight? I have no clue about it. Uh, what yes. is uh, yeah. such a high slab catch? I don't. I, mean, I already told you the answer. I, mean, mm-hmm. I don't get into all these financial details. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So finally, how do you see the digital space opening up for web series? I, I think that's the future. I have no doubts about it. See, the, see, the point is today, if you look at the great series made by Netflix and all that, you know, as Game of Thrones or Narcos or, uh, or House of Cards or whatever, all of them, I think this is most of the time I meet people who ask me what series are you watching. They don't ask what film are you watching anymore, and I think it's going very, very fast. You know, and uh, the fact that you can. Uh, I mean, really get deep into the whole thing, and you can just go and imagine. We are scared of making a film more than two hours long. People are binge watching something like a Narcos for twelve hours at a stretch, which means the content is so interesting. You know, so I think your mindset completely changes when you are thinking of it in terms of a web series. You don't need to have that uh, stipulated first act, second act, interval, kab hai, climax, kab hai, pre-climax. Now, all of this you can just take it out and uh, tell the story in your own way, as long as you think uh, it, it deserves to be told. Okay. So, Ramu, explain. Does it mean that it is a threat to films? Hmm? So the series and everything is a threat. To I won't say threat. I think they all will survive in their own things. I mean, it's like uh, I mean, I think it's a different way of listening to. I mean, you can go to an IMAX, you can see it. Uh, you can see a short film. You can see. A long film. I think it is just one more. I would say, yeah. ऐसी कोई genre जो आपको लगता है अभी तक try नहीं किया मैं करना चाहता हूँ. ऐसी कोई इच्छा कि ये story होना चाहिए. I think I just put my finger in every genre. I really don't know if, uh, I mean, at least the ones I am interested in. I would say, yeah. So how do you see the power of the body? Yeah. Yeah. What is your experience? Only this one. There is a just. Your, how Indian hmm. cinema is doing in India? I think that is like over the phenomena. I think Bahubali more than a film. I think it's a phenomena. I think it is going to rewrite all the rules of uh, the big screen forever. Yeah. Is it more creatively satisfying for you, web series, as a filmmaker? I think this is the height of satisfaction for the simple reason that I can tell. And I can show exactly what I deeply feel about, without uh, thinking for one second about you know 
ये क्या होगा आपको कैसे मिलेगा इनको कैसे यू नो ऑल दिस आई मीन इट इज़ लाइक लाइक आई सेड इन द बीनिंग ऑफ द इंटरव्यू नथिंग गेट्स लॉस्ट इन ट्रांसलेशन इट इज जस्ट द नियरेस्ट टू वॉट एज ए मेकर एज ए स्टोरी टेलर आई वॉन्ट टू से आई कैन जस्ट सेट So what are the series that you're watching? <laughs> right now. <laughs> I'm actually not watching very right good. I'm really tied up in all this work here. Yeah. So, but any Indian web series that you really love yeah. in recent times? I honestly haven't really seen any you know, Indian web series. Uh, and, uh, an but I watch uh, for yeah. An international series you like? I like like Narcos, oh, also yeah. cards. Yeah. Yeah. You saw yeah. the quotes yeah. there of. Pablo Escobar. Yeah, yeah. Pablo Escobar, I studied him a lot. I read a lot of books of him and uh, things like that. Yeah. Sir, yes. so are you uh, watching the web series entirely on YouTube or some platform like this? I mean, there will be late, later on. But this is just a start, I would say. You are planning to launch a whole new platform just like Spotify? Yeah, yeah. Even that is on the cards. When will you all launch the series? Uh, I. I've not yet decided, but I would think in a couple of months' time. Ready? Okay, complete. Okay. No, no, no. I mean, it's still. So in ten seasons, right? I mean, we saw there. Four, four, four seasons. Four seasons. Ten seasons. Ten seasons. Ten seasons. Forty seasons. Forty episodes. 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 For